Pipe sizing is one of the first major activities a process engineer shall carry out during the preparation of P&ID drawings. Pipe size is an important factor for a well-designed process. It shall affect fluid velocity, pressure drop, flow regime, etc. A poorly sized pipe can cause disturbance to the whole process and may lead to plant shutdown in critical cases. Pipe size also has a lot to do with cost. Oversizing a pipe means extra cost, more complex pipe design, more foundation, even sometimes process issues. The main pipe sizing criteria are velocity, pressure drop, and flow regimes for two-phase flow. Sizing criteria are mainly based on common practice, so they vary between companies. Accordingly, these criteria must be confirmed in every project. When we start sizing a pipe, velocity will be the most important criteria to start with. High velocities can cause line erosion. Even sometimes liquid high velocities can be a cause of corrosion in the pipe. High gas velocities can cause high noise. This noise can be too high to the point that it can affect the human ear if it is continuous. For gas or a two-phase line, maximum allowable velocity depends on fluid density, which means momentum, or in other words, the rho v squared value. Now after we talked about the velocity criteria, let's talk about the pressure drop. As the flow rate of a fluid increases, its velocity increases, which means that this shall cause more friction with the pipe. This friction represents the pipe resistance to flow. It hinders the flow of fluid and decreases its pressure. If the pipe is not large enough, this shall cause the fluid to lose much pressure. This can be a cause to reduce the flow rate to be less than the desired flow, which can affect the whole plant operation, and may lead sometimes to plant shutdown. In general, to choose the right pipe size, we usually do this in two approaches. The first approach is related to preliminary sizing. We have a fluid flow, we calculate the expected pressure drop per a specific distance, then we compare it with the criteria we have, which is the same approach in the case of velocity. The second approach is more firm, we look at the system as a whole, and we check if the total pressure drop in the pipe is okay. Or do we need a greater size? That happens when we have the piping isometrics, we have the exact distances, and pipe fittings, we have the pressure drop in other equipment, so that we know the maximum pressure drop in the pipe. Now we can compare it with the total pressure drop we calculated, and make sure that the calculated pressure drop is less than the allowable pressure drop. Two-phase flow is the most critical type of fluid flow. This is because its calculation is much more complex, it's very sensitive to changes in fluid conditions in pipe orientation. These can cause changes in flow regimes. There are various types of flow regimes for a two-phase flow. It can be wave flow, stratified flow, bubble flow, annular mist flow, and slug flow which is the most dangerous one. Slug flow is undesirable as it can cause vibration and severe damage to the pipe. To calculate the pipe size, you can use the equations used to calculate velocity and pressure drop, then compare the result with the criteria you have. For two-phase flow, more complex equations are used. You can use an Excel sheet reflecting the sizing procedure. You can also use some online tools such as keycalc.com or a mobile app as Process Engineer Toolbox which is available on iOS and Android. If you like to know more about pipe sizing criteria, how to calculate the pipe size with suitable velocity and pressure drop, see live examples with an Excel sheet you can access, check out the link in the description. And, have a nice day!